Hello welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we tell you why did Russia conquer Siberia? The Khanate of Sibir was an ancient Turkic state on the territory of present-day Siberia. It was older than Russia, but in the end, it was absorbed and destroyed. Siberia is a region in North Asia. Separated from Russia's primary territory by the Ural Mountains in the west and bounded by the Pacific Ocean in the east. In the north and south, it is delimited by the Russian state border. Siberia covers an area of over 13 million square kilometers and accounts for 77% of the area of modern Russia. But there was a time when Siberia was the name of a separate country. How did it come into being and why did it disappear? About 1500 BC, Iranian-speaking tribes began to settle in Siberian territory. A thousand years later, in the 6th century BC, Turkic-speaking peoples arrived, and by the 12th-13th centuries AD, as a result of the mixing of Iranian, Turkic and native Ugric tribes, the ethnic group of Siberian Tatars had evolved. At the beginning of the 13th century, the Mongol Empire of Genghis Khan subjugated the tribes that inhabited Siberia. To safeguard his life and the prosperity of his lands, one of the local rulers, Prince Taibuga, agreed to submit to Genghis Khan. Taibuga started collecting tribute from his territories for Genghis Khan and founded Chimgitura. The capital of the first state in Siberia known to us, the Khanate of Tumen, which later became the Khanate of Sibir. In 1224, not long before his death, Genghis Khan divided his possessions between his sons. The lands of the future Golden Horde, including the future Khanate of Tumen, went as an Ulus, i.e. a territorial inheritance from which tribute was exacted to Genghis Khan's son Jochi and not long afterwards, following his death, to Genghis Khan's grandson Shiban, or Sheban. The latter founded the Shibanid dynasty, rulers of the Ulus of Shiban. When, at the end of the 13th century, powerful ruler Ozbek became leader of the Golden Horde, he allowed the Ulus, which was already known as the Two Men Ulus, to keep its autonomy and self-government. Ozbek reformed all the other Ulysses of the Golden Horde and subdued their princes. However, in the early 15th century, as a result of a political crisis in the Golden Horde, the Shibanid dynasty Ulus declared its independence, and in 1420 the Khanate of Tumen came into existence. Its founder was the Shibanid Koja Muhammad. In 1495, a hostile Khan, Taibuga, attacked the Khanate of Tumen killed the Shibanid Ibak Khan and moved the Khanate's capital from Chimgitura to Kashlik, which was also called Sibir. From then on the Taibujids became the rulers of the new Khanate, which was by then known as the Khanate of Sibir. In the 16th century the Tsardom of Muscovy conquered the Kazan and Astrakhan Khanates. Major, Slivers, of the Golden Horde which had resisted the authority of the Russian Tsar. The seizure of Kazan was particularly fierce. Although the Khanate of Sibir was separated from Muscovy by the barely passable Ural Mountains, in 1555 the Taibujid Khan, Edegay, recognized the authority of Moscow and even began to pay tribute, but in 1563 a Shibanid, Khan Kutchum seized power in the Khanate. In 1571 he sent a huge tribute of 1,000 sable furs to Moscow but following this generous gesture, Kutchum broke off the tribute arrangements and a year later sent his nephew Mehmet Kul on a reconnaissance to the Russian lands. Mehmet Kul harried the populations of villages belonging to the Stroganov merchant family which extracted salt in the Perm salt mines, he plundered several villages and captured their inhabitants. Fearing that the Tatar hordes would ruin their business, 
The Stroganovs began to look for protectors and hired the Cossack leader Ataman Yamak and his Druzhina private army. In 1582, Yamak with several hundred heavily armed fighters set out from Oyol Gorodok, the Stroganovs' fortified residence, crossed the mountains and captured the old capital of the Khanate of Chimen, Chimgi Tura. Soon afterwards the decisive battle of Chuvash Cape took place. At the confluence of the rivers Tobol and Irtish, Makhmet Kul gathered 15,000 nomadic Tatar troops. But they were smashed by Yermik's Drozhina, which was small but armed with arquebuses, an early type of shoulder-fired gun. Three weeks later Yermak seized Kashlik, from which Kam Kuchum had already escaped into the steppes. Yamak never returned from his Siberian campaign. He was killed in one of the skirmishes, and Khan Kuchum never surrendered to the Moscow. Tsar, disappearing into the steppe and attacking Russian garrisons for a long time, until the very end of the 16th century. But in Yamak's footsteps, other Russian Druzhinas and conquerors, who were now less fearful of the defeated Tatars, began to make sorties beyond the Urals. The fortresses of Tumen, Veryozov and Tobol soon sprang up. The latter, founded 17 kilometers from Kashlik, was for a long time called Sibir Town. Tobolsk became the center of Russia's colonization of Siberia. It gradually developed and in 1708 became the capital of Siberia Governorate, the largest in Russia.